Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create a horizontal box plot. A box plot is commonly used as a statistical visualization tool to kind of get an idea of where a range of data sit. You can see we have a lower quartile Q1, a median, and an upper quartile Q3. We also have the idea of our whiskers, which show the range from the upper and lower quartiles to the minimum and maximum of the data. So it kind of gives you an idea of how spread out uh, this data is. Now in Excel, if you have Excel 2016, to create a box plot is actually pretty easy because you just select your data, go to insert, under our charts group and under the box and whisker area, we can create a box and whisker chart, which basically is a box plot. However, it lets you create one that is a vertical box plot. But if we wanted to create a horizontal box plot and going from left to right, we probably have to go back and create it kind of from scratch and not use the charting engine. It still uses the charting engine, but it's going to use a stack column chart. And I'll show you how to create that. So let's go into our demo tab here. And there's a couple of things that we need to do first to create this box plot we need to get these particular parameters for the data. Now the min is going to be the minimum number in this range. So the formula for that, or the function for that, is just the min function returns the smallest number in the set of values. I just type, I just press the tab key and select my numbers, All right, and just press return because it will close that, close that parentheses there and execute that function. So it's 421. Now for the Q1 function, there's actually a nice function in Excel called the quartile function. So I just put equal quartile, and I'm going to use this first one, quartile.exc. And this is going to be exclusive of the median value. So you can do exclusive of the median value or inclusive to include the median value. In this example, we're going to use exclusive of, exclusive of the median. So I'll double click that and get my array here comma, and which quartile? So this is Q1. It's going to be the first quartile. So I'll just press the number one, close parentheses, press enter. And for the median, we can also use, we can either use the median, there is a median function, or I can go back and use the quartile function because, let me tab that to complete it. If you notice, if I, after I select my range here, comma, it also lets me choose a median value, which is the 50 percentile. So I'll just press, press two, close parentheses, press enter, and for my Q3 quartile, press tab, and select my array, and comma, which quartile? Going to be the third quartile, the third value, press 3, close parentheses, press enter. Now for the max value, just like we have a min function, there is a max function, so I'll just type max, tab to, com to open the parentheses, and select this range of values, press enter, and I have my values here that are needed to create the box plot. But before we need to do that, we can't, we can't just plot this data into the box plot. We have to kind of um, use another table to bring out components of that data to actually draw out the box plot. So what I need to do is I'm going to use these values to create the box plot. So up to Q1 is going to be all the way from the bottom up to Q1. So that's just going to be equal to this value here. Q1 to Q2, that is going to be the difference between the median and Q1. So that's going to be equal 860. I'll just select the cell B18 minus uh, the cell, the values in B17, which is 739. Press enter. Oops. That was not, it's not equal. It's minus. Press enter. And from Q2 to Q3, it's the difference between that value which is in cell B19 minus the value in B18, right? The bottom whisker is going to be the difference between Q1 and the minimum. So it's going to be equal Q1 minus the minimum. And the top whisker is going to be the difference between the maximum and Q3. So it's going to be cell B20 minus cell B19, right? Since I have these values here are already cal cal kind of calculated, and if I want to do a comparison to group two, I'm just going to pull that over for now. Let's pull that over, and it will calculate it correctly because it just pulled it into column two. This is all column 
B, a uh, column B, and, and this is stuff in column C. I'll do the same thing here. Just select my data there, bring over the fill handle. It's going to copy the formulas over. You can see everything here is for B, column B, and everything over here is going to be for column C. Right? So let's just start out with column B first. I'm going to take this data. Oh, actually, I only, only need these set of data. And I'm going to take this too because I want to have the header as a field so it recognizes where to put that in the legend. Go to insert and I want to create a stacked column chart. Right? Now it's not going to draw it out correctly here. And what I need to do is I don't, I don't have three series of data together. I only have um, one series of data but I have three data points. It should, should all be in one all in one bar. So I'm going to click on switch row and column. So it's stacked them up on top of each other. You can see now they're stacked, right? We have 0 to 739. We have 121 here. We have 147 there. Now what I need to do is I need to create those error bars. You can see it's kind of already got it halfway there. I've got my 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 values here from Q1. This is like from Q1 to the median here and the median to Q3. But I need those error bars to simulate those whiskers. To create an error bar, all I need to do is click on the bottom part here, the up to Q1 setting, go to add chart element and click on error bar. And I want to get more error bar options. Now I can I want to have the direction on both ways and the end style having a cap is fine. I want to create a custom error amount and the error amount is going to be one of is going to be the values here, right? So I'm going to specify value, and it's going to be since this is the bottom part, this is going to be the negative value area. So it's going to be the bottom whisker, all right? The bottom whisker is going to be 318 here. Click OK, and now you notice that it's kind of drawn and out down there, all right? Now I need to do the same here for the top whisker. Select on this portion of the chart, this median to Q3 area, and also add chart element and go to error bars, more error bar options, and do the same thing here. But this time it's going to be the positive select value, and it's going to be the positive error value, the ones that's going up. I can leave that one as is. So I'll just delete that, and I'm going to select the top whisker here. All right? Click OK, and now it's drawn out the top whisker there. So I don't really need this blue area there. I don't need the color there, because it, it should really just be blank or transparent. I'm going to select that, right click for the fill, let's make it no fill, and for the outline, let's make it no outline. Right now I have my box and whiskers chart. Click on the grid lines here, we don't need that, and press delete. And now we have our box and whiskers chart, right? So we have our bottom part of the whisker, it goes to the minimum value, right, 421. So it's kind of right there at 421. And the top part, it should go to the maximum at 1306. It's kind of hovering over there at 1306. We have our median here in the middle around 800, 860. And the Q1 starts off at 739 around there. And the uh, Q3 kind of ends at 1007, right? So if I wanted to add my uh, groups, group two scores, I can s select that data. I have to press the control key to select discontinuous cells. So I'm going to select up there. And control C and I just put it in here. Let's see if Excel smart enough for me to paste it in there and recognize it, right? Control V to paste and it didn't really do a good job. Let's control Z to undo that. Let's do it manually now. Okay, so let's go and add it in manually. Select on my chart, right click, select data. And you notice that it's kind of uh, on my series, we have three separate series of data. It's kind of easier if I kind of switch it back and add it in under group scores here. Make that the series. It's one thing to add because if you notice, if that's selected, it lets me add the series name, which is up here, and also the series values, which is down there. It makes it a little bit easier. Let's cancel that. All I need to do, oops, let's switch it back. Oh boy, it's messed it up. But let's go ahead and just switch it and let's change it here. Let's add my group scores here up here. And my series values, it's going to be these down here. That's my second series. Click OK. And now I'll switch it. All right. So after switching it, 
we can see that we still have some work to do. It kind of messed it up. So again, we can just all we need to do is add the error bars here at the bottom. So I need to go under design, add chart element, go to error bars, more error bars, and select the custom, right? Because that's going to be the upper ones, and that's going to be the positive value. So that's going to be the top whisker here. So I can just select, I think I can select these two now since I've since it's picked it, let's see what happens. Yep, it picked them up both nicely. So let's check and see if we have it right. Let's see, group two, we had our maximum at 1306. That kind of matches that. And for group one, it should be, oh, the maximum for group one is 1306 here. And for group two, it should be 1200. And for the minimum, group one, we have at 421, but it, group two should be 150. And that's because we didn't set that one. So let's go click on the error bar there. Let's go to format the error bar, specify value, and see what happened. Oh, it only it only picked up that, only this cell, right? So we need to pick up those two ranges. Delete that, and select these two. Click OK, and now it's kind of picked it up, right? So it's picked up the error bar value. It should be at 150 there, right? So that's the way that we can do that. As you can see, once we created a box and whiskers chart for one set of data, if we want to add another set of data, it becomes a little bit more involved or just a couple more steps they have to do, but it's actually not that bad. Well, let's kind of go and see what happens if we actually did both at the same time, right? It'd be pretty easy, right? Let me delete that and select my range here and press the control key and select my range up here, go to insert and select the 2D column chart, right? And this is kind of like picked it out kind of nicely. Uh, let's see if I needed to switch anything. Yep, I did. So because I had three bars instead of two. So these are my three bars instead of two. I can just select on my lower bar here, go to add chart element, error bar, and more error bars. This will be the lower, bar, lower one. Whoops, let's go into here and select the defaults, keep the defaults, go to custom, select value, and this is going to be the bottom part, right? So delete that, and the bottom whisker is going to be these two values. Press OK, and it's got those values there. Click on my upper, my Q3 range, you can see they're both selected. Do the same thing here. Go to error bars, and more error bar options, and select my custom, specify value. It's going to be this top error bar, delete that the top whisker right here, press OK, enter to select that, select my uh, my blue range here, this one I can make transparent, right click, go to fill, no fill, outline, no outline, and let's get rid of the grid lines here, select that, press delete, and now I have my box plot for both of them. See, that was a lot easier to do instead of like creating one and then adding another one uh, that's all it's already all set up for you I don't need this legend here so I'm gonna just delete that and we have our box plot or a horizontal box plot and just to make sure these values are right this is the minimum value here which would be 150 which coincides with that group 1 421 mm-hmm my median which is for group 1 here is around 860 978 for group 2 all right that looks good and for my max, group one is a little over 1200, 1306, and 1200 for group two, right? So that's kind of matches it nicely. So that's the way we can create a horizontal box plot. You can see that in Excel, 20, at least 2016, you have the option to create a box and whiskers chart that is vertical, but really there's not one to create a horizontal one. So you have to go through these steps. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.